Okay guys, in section 7.1 of plane trigonometry, we're gonna talk about right triangle applications. And then also in this video, we're gonna talk about section 7.4, which is about area of triangles. So question one, in a right triangle, if two sides are known, can the triangle be solved? And when we say solved, what we mean is can we find all of the sides and all of the angles? Okay, so let's just say hypothetically that uh, we were given that this height of the triangle is 12 and the base of the triangle is 13. Would it then be possible to find all of the other sides and angles involved in this triangle? Well, obviously this angle is a right angle since it's a right triangle, which means it's 90 degrees. And then to find the third side, we could use Pythagorean theorem. So that would definitely be possible to find all of the sides because we could find the third one by using the Pythagorean theorem. Now, from there, would we be able to find the other two angles? And if you think about it, the answer to that question is yes, for sure, we could use trigonometry to find those missing angles. So we could use our basic trig functions, and, and probably most of you remember this as SOKOTOA, in order to find the missing angles. And so the answer to this question is yes, if we are given two of the sides of a right triangle, the triangle can be solved, meaning we can find all of the rest of the sides and the angles. So our question, uh, the answer to this question is definitely yes. Now, question two, what if we know two of the other angles? So if we know two of the acute angles, we obviously know that one's 90. Let's say that we know this one is 20, which means this one would be 70. Would we be able to find any of the sides? Well, the answer to that question is no, because in order to use SOKOTOA, you've got to have at least one of the sides. And since we don't have what the length of any of the sides are, this triangle cannot be solved just by knowing the two acute angles. Okay, so question one, yes, we can solve the triangle if we know two of the sides. No, unfortunately, we cannot solve the triangle if we know the two acute angles. Okay, so in example one, we're going to be given two pieces of information and asked to find the other three pieces of information about the triangle. And so just to give you a heads up on two things, First of all, lowercase letters are going to be sides. So when it says A is equal to 10, A is equal to 10, that is a side of the triangle. And so you can kind of see over here, I've given you a triangle, side A would be down there on the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and write in 10 down here on the bottom of this triangle. And capital B is an angle. So whenever you see capital letters, we're talking about angles. And so capital B is going to be 36 degrees right here. Okay, it, and obviously here, guys, this would be a right angle, right? Because it's a right triangle. So what we want to do is we want to first of all find letter B. And so to find letter B, letter B is going to be the side that is opposite of angle B, which remember was down here. This was angle A up here at the top. And so we're trying to find the opposite side of angle B. And we are given the adjacent side of angle B, and we want the opposite. And so that means we're going to use tangent, because I know that tangent of 36 degrees is going to equal the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, which is 10. Okay, so if I want to solve that for B, then I need to multiply both sides by 10. And so that's going to be 10 tangent of 36 degrees. And when you use your calculator here, this is very important, you've got to make sure that you are in degree mode because if you are not, you will not get correct answers. So we want to be in degree mode and 10 tangent of 36 rounded to two decimal places is 7.27. Okay, in order to find letter C, that's what we want to find next. Letter C would be the hypotenuse here. And so you can use... Whichever trig function that you want, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to use cosine of angle B because for angle B, I've got angle B here. This is the adjacent side, and what we want is the hypotenuse. So I'm going to say that cosine of 36 degrees is equal to the adjacent side 10 divided by the hypotenuse, which we're calling C. 
And if you solve that for C, what you're going to end up getting is 10 divided by the cosine of 36. And when you put that into your calculator in degree mode, you end up with 12.36. Okay, the last thing it wants us to find is angle A. Angle A is actually the easiest of all of these things to find because I know that in a triangle, all of the angles are going to add to 180. So I'm going to take 180 and subtract the other two angles, which would be 90 and 36, and that's going to end up giving me 54 degrees for capital A. Okay, example two is very similar to this. Um, this time we want to find A, then C, then B. And we were given that B is equal to 4, so I'm going to put that here. And we were given that capital A is 70, and I'm going to put that at the top of my triangle. And again, I'm just basing it off of this uh, triangle that I gave you back up here. Okay, so the first thing we want to find is side A, which is going to be this bottom side down here. And since this is the angle that I have here, a is the opposite side, and 4 is the adjacent side. That means, again, I'm going to use tangent of 70 degrees is equal to A divided by 4. Multiply both sides by 4 to get A by itself. And 4 tangent of 70 degrees, when we put it into the calculator, in degree mode is going to be 10.99. Okay, next thing we want to get is C. And so C, I can use, again, angle capital A that I was given. And I'm going to also use the side that was given, which is the 4. So that means I'm going to use cosine of 70 degrees is equal to the adjacent side, which is 4, divided by the hypotenuse, which is C. And rearranging that so that C is by itself, we're going to get 4 divided by the cosine of 70 and putting that into the calculator in degree mode is going to give you 11.70. And then the last thing is to find Sorry. the last Hi. angle. Sorry about that. Siri is trying to get in on our uh, video here. The last thing we want to do is find that angle, capital B. And so that's going to be 180 minus 90 minus 20, which is going to be, uh, oh, sorry, minus 70 which is going to give us 20 degrees for capital B. Okay, so we have our three answers here, um, and this is what we call solving the triangle. So when we solve the triangle, that means we're finding all of the missing information. Okay, in example three, we're given two of the sides. Remember from question one that if we're given two of the sides, we are going to be able to solve the triangle. Okay, so if we know that A is 19, I'm going to put that down here on the bottom. We know that B is 2, and the first thing that it wants me to find is the remaining side. And so the remaining side is going to be Pythagorean theorem, and so I know that I'm going to do 19 squared plus 2 squared is equal to C squared, and so C is equal to the square root of 19 squared plus 2 squared, and just typing that into the calculator, you're going to get 19.10. Okay, from there, I've got to find one of the other angles, and this is going to have to be done using an inverse. And so let's just say that I want to find angle capital B down here first. Uh, actually, I'm going to find angle capital A, which is going to be the top angle. So for angle capital A, I'm going to have tangent of capital A is equal to 19 divided by 2, the opposite side divided by the adjacent side. Okay, that means that A is going to equal to tan inverse of 19 divided by 2, and we're going to round that to the nearest whole number, and that's going to give us 84 degrees. And so then, to find capital B, we're going to take 180 and subtract the other two angles, which will end up giving us a really tiny angle of 6 degrees. Okay, in example four, it tells us that the hypotenuse of a right triangle is 11. So I'm going to go ahead and put 11 there as my hypotenuse. If one of the legs is six inches, find the degree measure of each angle. So really, it doesn't matter where you put this six. You could put it as the side, uh, the, the height, or you could put it as the base. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to go ahead and put it as the base. And I'm going to call this angle A. I'm going to call this angle B. 
And so what I'm going to have here is the sine of capital A. Well, if I look at capital A, the sine is going to be 6 divided by 11. And so this is going to say 6 divided by 11. Therefore, capital A is going to be sine inverse of 6 divided by 11. And so remember, that sine inverse button is the second sine button on your calculator. And rounding to the nearest tenth is going to give me 33.1 degrees. Okay, for B, I'm going to use cosine because if you look at angle B, 6 is the adjacent side, 11 is the hypotenuse. So this is going to be cosine of capital B is equal to 6 divided by 11, which means that B is going to be the inverse cosine of 6 divided by 11. And when you punch that into the calculator, making sure you're in degree mode, you're going to get 56.9 degrees. And obviously, I could have done 180 minus 33.1 minus uh, 90 there. That would have been another way to get the answer for capital B. But this way that I did it here is actually more accurate um, way to do it. So I would suggest doing it that way using trigonometry as opposed to using uh, the 180 minus the other two angles. Okay, in example five, we see that the hypotenuse is 2. If one of the angles is 34 degrees, and I'm going to put 34 degrees down here as the bottom angle, you could just as easily put it as the top angle. It really wouldn't matter here. Find the other two sides. So I'm going to call the other sides B and A. And so if I want to find, uh, let's just say I want to find A first. For A, I'm going to use cosine because A is the adjacent side to my angle 34 degrees here. So A divided by 2 is going to be the cosine of 34 degrees. Since cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's going to be A divided by 2. And solving for A by multiplying both sides by 2 is going to give you 2 cosine of 34 degrees. And punching that into the calculator is going to give you 1.7. Okay. To find letter B, the way that I've called it here, letter B, I'm going to use sine because for 34 degrees, B is the opposite side, 2 is the hypotenuse. So we're going to say that the sine of 34 degrees is equal to B divided by 2. And so that means that B... Man, she uh, really wants to get in on our video here. 2 sine of 34, which is going to give us 1.1 as side B. Okay, in example six and following, we're gonna get into uh, some word problems here. And so on example six, it says that a tower is 102 feet tall. And so usually towers are sticking straight up into the air. That means I'm gonna put my 102 over there on the side for the height of this triangle. It casts a shadow that's 103 feet long. And usually your shadow is on the ground. And so I'm going to put my shadow there as the base, my 103. Find the angle of elevation to the sun to the nearest degree. And so the angle of elevation is always the angle that is down here on the bottom. And I'm going to call it A. That's going to be my angle of elevation. So what sides do I have? I have the opposite side. I have the adjacent side. And so that means I'm going to be using tangent of A is equal to 102 divided by 103. And so that means that A is going to equal to tan inverse of 102 divided by 103. And to the nearest degree, that's going to give me 45 degrees. Okay, on example seven, please don't worry about what a funicular is. To be honest with you, I had to look up what that was. Um, it, it's kind of like a like a, I don't know what you would call it, like a Ferris wheel, I guess you could say. Um, but feel free to Google it, look it up, see what it is if you really want to. Okay, I wouldn't really worry about it too much. Um, but here's what the picture is going to look like. You're going to carry passengers up an embankment to an observation point. The length of the track is 51.6 meters. So the, the track is going to be right here, 51.6 meters. And the angle of inclination is 37 degrees, one minute. So 37 degrees and one minute is that angle on the bottom. And when you think angle of inclination, you can think that's the same thing as 
angle of elevation there, and we want to determine the height of the embankment. Okay, so we're going to use, in this case, sine, because what we have is an angle right here with the opposite side called x and the hypotenuse of 51.6. Okay, so sine of 37 degrees and one minute is equal to x divided by 51.6. Now, just real quick, we're going to have to remember how to convert between DMS and degrees. And so just a reminder that this is going to be 37 plus 1 divided by 60. Okay? And so when you put this into the calculator, you're going to have x is equal to 51.6 multiplied by sine of 37 plus 1 divided by 60. And that's going to give you to two decimal places, 31.07 meters. Okay, on example eight, it says that a state trooper is hidden 30 feet from a highway. One second after the truck passes, the angle between the highway and the line of observation from the patrol car is measured. And so you can see that angle is right there on the picture that's given in the problem. If that angle measures 15 degrees, so let's go ahead and just put 15 degrees right here into our triangle. How fast is the truck moving? Express the answer in feet per second and in miles per hour. And so this is going to be a 30 here. We're just copying that in from the picture. And what we're wanting to figure out is how far did this truck go in one second? Okay, so if you look at this drawing, here is our angle 15. This 30 is the opposite side and X is the adjacent side. And so that means we're going to use tangent in order to figure this out. Tangent of 15 degrees is going to be equal to the opposite side of 30 divided by uh, x. I, I wrote a there, but what I meant to write was x to keep it consistent with the picture. And then solving for x, we're going to get x is equal to 30 divided by tangent of 15 degrees, which is going to give us in feet per second 1 11.96 feet per second. Now, that's the first answer because it wanted us to give it in feet per second, but it also wants the answer in miles per hour. And so we're going to have to do some converting here. And so doing my dimensional analysis, I know that for every, uh, let's see here, 5,280 feet, there is one mile. And so that's going to cancel out feet. It's going to give me miles. Now I want to get to hours. And so I know that for every 60 seconds, there is one minute. And then finally, I know that for every 60 minutes, there is one hour. And so what you're going to see here, I can do this in a different color if it's helpful. The seconds are going to cancel and the minutes are going to cancel, and so the, the units that are left here are miles per hour, and so when you put that into the calculator, you should get 76.34 miles per hour. Okay, so two answers since there were two questions. One 11.96 feet per second and 76.34 miles per hour. Okay, in letter B, it's the exact same process. And so I'm going to give you a chance to try letter B on your own. I will go ahead and just tell you what the answers are. In feet per second, you're going to have 48.01 feet per second. And in miles per hour, you're going to have 32.7 miles per hour. If you have questions on how to do that, please let me know. But it's exactly like letter A except in the picture, you're going to have a 32 as your angle right there. Okay, letter C. If the speed limit is 50 miles per hour and a speeding ticket is issued for speeds of 10 miles per hour or more over the limit, for what angle should a trooper issue a ticket? Now, our picture, if you go back up here to the picture, our picture is based on feet per second. And so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to convert our miles per hour 
into feet per second. But the first question you have to answer is, what speed do you have to be going in order to get a ticket? Well, if the speed limit is 50 miles an hour and you're not gonna get a ticket until you're going 10 miles per hour over the limit, that means that in order to get a ticket, you've gotta be going 60 miles per hour, 50 plus 10. We need to convert this into feet per second. So this is going to be very similar to what we did in A and B. We're gonna have one mile down here on the bottom and the number of feet in a mile is 5,280. We know that for every one hour, there are 60 minutes, and that for every one minute, there are 60 seconds. And when you put all of that into the calculator, you're going to end up with 88 feet per second. And so that is going to go at the top of our picture, because at the top of our picture, the distance that you travel in one second is what you put. So for one second, we're going to go 88 feet. That's going to be the upper bound or the... I'm gonna have to take off my watch. My watch keeps wanting to uh, get in on our, on our notes here. So watch is off. Hopefully we won't hear from Siri again. 88 feet per second is gonna go as the uh, top of that. And this is going to remain 30. And we want to figure out what does this angle have to be in order to get a ticket. And so if you look here, we've got the opposite side 30. We've got the adjacent side 88. And so that means we're going to use tangent of A is equal to 30 divided by 88, which means that A is equal to tangent inverse of 30 divided by 88 which is going to equal to 88.82 degrees. And so for every angle that is smaller than 18.82 degrees, you're going to get a ticket. Okay, so all angles that are smaller than that number right there, 18.82 degrees, if the trooper measures your angle and it's smaller than that, you are going to get a ticket. So be careful, don't have an angle smaller than 18.82 degrees unless you wanna pay the government some money. Okay, example nine is what we would call a navigation problem or a bearing problem. And so let's just take a look at this real quick. It says that a DC-9 aircraft leaves an airport from a runway whose bearing is north 59 degrees east. Now here's what that means. You've got to know a little bit about the compass rose. So maybe you learned in elementary school, uh, never eat soggy waffles, right? So never eat soggy waffles or, you know, there's other acronyms that you maybe have learned just to remember that compass rose. And so here's what that means. North 59 degrees east means start at due north and then go 59 degrees to the east. So this is going to be to the east and we're gonna go 59 degrees, which is gonna put us there. And it says that you're gonna uh, fly for three quarters of a mile. So this is gonna be three fourths of a mile right here. The pilot requests permission to turn 90 degrees and head toward the southeast. So you're going to turn and head 90 degrees towards the southeast, and you're going to go for one mile, it says after the plane goes one mile in that direction. That's where I'm getting that from. Which bearing should the control tower use to locate the aircraft? And so we're gonna complete our right triangle here. And basically what we're trying to find is this angle right here, and then we're going to add it to 59 degrees so that we can get our angle of bearing. So this right here is our angle of bearing, and that's what we are trying to find. And in order to do that, we've got to find first this angle that is inside of the triangle. Okay, well, here's what we can do. We know that uh, that 59 degrees, in order to find that angle, let's just call it capital A, um, we're going to do the following here. Tangent of A is equal to, well, the opposite side of A is gonna be one, and the adjacent side is gonna be three-fourths, 
And so that means that A is going to equal to tan inverse of 1 divided by 3 fourths, which when you put it into the calculator, making sure you're in degree mode, you're going to get 53.1 degrees. But that is not the angle of bearing because you've got to add it to your original bearing, which means that my final answer is going to be 53.1 plus 59 which gives me a total of 112.1 degrees. Now, we want to write this as a bearing. So if you think about 112 degrees, here's north. 112 degrees would be down here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this from east, or really, honestly, from south. We're going to go starting at south and figure out how many degrees we have to go to the east in order to get to this place right here. Okay, well, if south is 180 degrees, which it is, then to figure out what this angle is right here, we need to do 180 minus 112.1, and what that's going to give us is 67.9 degrees. And so our answer in bearing format is south 67.9 degrees east. Or another way to say that is 67.9 degrees east of south. Please let me know if you have any questions on that example. Probably one of the harder examples that we'll do. So feel free to rewind, watch it again. And if, if it still doesn't make sense, then please uh, feel free to ask. Okay, here on example 10, we're going to have to draw our own picture. It says the angle of inclination from the base of skyscraper A. So let's draw, whoops, let's uh, not do it in highlighter. Let's do it in pen. Let's draw skyscraper A here to the top of skyscraper B. So we've got two skyscrapers. We say that the angle of inclination from A to B, from the base of A to the top of B, is approximately 12.2. So this is going to be 12.2. Here's the ground right here. If skyscraper B is 1,446 feet tall, how far apart are the two skyscrapers, which means we're looking for the distance between A and B. Okay, well, if we pay attention to this uh, triangle here, we've got this angle 12.2 degrees. 1446 is the opposite, and the adjacent is X. And so we're going to use tangent. So tangent of 12.2 is going to equal to the opposite divided by the adjacent. And then solving that for x is going to give us 1446 divided by the tangent of 12.2, which is equal to 6,688.01 feet. Okay, that's going to do it for section 7.1. I'm going to actually come out on a different video and talk to you about section 7.4, and uh, I'll attach that as well. So thank you guys for listening, and let me know if you have any questions.